Hello and welcome to Wheel of Horror Spring into Action Edition, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week, it chooses the action movie, and they discuss it. Today we're talking about the 1986 film Top Gun, which was directed by Tony Scott. I am Alec. I'm Eric, and with us is Nick Leone. Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So happy we finally got you, man. This is the movie that I I can't associate any other person with besides you, Nick. You are, to me, I think the biggest Top Gun fan I've ever met. Is that an overstatement? Or? No, that's just perfect. Like right now, I'm actually looking at my movie poster of Top Gun with Kelly McGillis and Tom Cruise on it and the beautiful F-14 in the background where it says right above it, up there with the best of the best. And we are the best right now. So this is going to be amazing. <laughs> Hell yeah. I guess, Eric, you and I, you know, when we were kids, I don't remember you and I really being like obsessed with Top Gun. I mean, we, we'd seen it, but what's your kind of relationship with this? Oh, 1980s. It, this is just such a perfect action movie. It's so <laughs> perfect. And like some of the quotes, the actors in it, it's like eighties in a nutshell, the music. I love the theme song to it too. Do, 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 do. Like that's so cool. Absolutely. The score is so good, but I guess Nick, I really want to hear just your everything with Top Gun. I mean, you are, Part you said you're part of like the the fan club, yes. So there is a actual Facebook group called the Top Gun Movie Fan Group, and it's on Facebook. And this is just Top Gun twenty four seven. There are people that are literally just this past day were like, "Oh hey, I'm working out to Danger Zone," and they're like, have the picture up, and everybody's now throwing their hands in the air because they just postponed the sequel again. So we're just kind of like, what is happening, like. But then we get everybody chiming in with, hey, how do we do the custom helmets? Like people are posting tutorials on how to remake Maverick's helmet. There's even uh, members of the group that actually worked on the movie that were the legit pilots Whoa. of the F-14s in the movie. And um, oh, they're even, yeah. And I've even had a few conversations with uh, Dave Baranek, his call signs bio. He wrote the book Top Gun Days and Top Gun and like Rio. And he basically worked on the movie and did a whole bunch of different things with the movie. He was almost kind of like a um, like an advisor to the team that was working on the movie. Like, for uh, example, uh, you know, all the radio chatter that they have in the movie when they're talking to each other in the airplanes, they're like smack talking and everything. He oh, yeah. helped them overdub that and kind of make it sound a little bit more real. Well, okay, so that, that brings up a cool point. So I was wondering, you know, like in the bar scene where um, Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis like first meet and Kelly McGillis goes up to that older guy and sits down with him and then Tom Cruise talks to her in the bathroom. You remember that scene, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So that older guy I was reading online, apparently he was kind of who Maverick was based off of, like yes. the actual real person. Yep. Okay. I don't know much about him, but so he's he was one of the, I'm assuming similar to this guy you're talking about, somebody that kind of like was a person they would reference on the movie set i would imagine yeah uh he was a he was a top gun instructor and he was one of the um yeah definitely one of the the guys that helped influence the way that they were doing the movie so that way it not only appealed to like mom and pop in the middle of the country but also wasn't completely embarrassing for anyone that actually was in the military right so, yeah a lot of people always say that this is kind of like a military recruitment video 110 percent, absolutely I read the real Top Gun, which at the beginning of the film, they call it Fighter Weapons School, Ooh. right? Don't they say that in like the, the, the writing, like Fighter Weapons School? It's like the pilots call it Top Gun. It's like yep. that's a way, way cooler name than Fighter Weapons School. Well, um, <laughs> but but I, read, I read that the, the real Top Gun school puts a $5 fine on any pilot that quotes the movie. Yep. Like, we do none of that shit here. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They do. They I think it's like five bucks for every reference you make that to the to the actual movie. It's because in the in the long run, the actual movie was not at all really what it's like to be a fighter pilot, like in real life. What they don't show you in the movie is them actually doing the briefings and working everything out and how difficult it is to actually fly the F-14 and like the moments in between where you're not going like Mach 2 with your hair on fire. You're actually doing like a boring reconnaissance mission and nothing happens, you know? <laughs> yeah, I wonder what happened What happened if you played Danger Zone. It's like, that's a $500 fine. Oh, <laughs> none of that in this school. They, they <laughs> automatically reject you. They're like, nope, sorry, you can't do it. Yeah, get them out of here. No mustaches, no aviators. They're like very strict. <laughs> 
I heard also, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that in 1987, the naval recruitment percentage was up like 500% from the previous year. That is an absolute fact. They actually, I kid you not, in movies and movie theaters that were playing the movie, they had recruitment stations out right. front of the theater where they were recruiting people. They were coming out of the movie so completely jazzed and just like, yeah, I'm going to be a fighter pilot. No, you're going to clean toilets. Like, <laughs> no, I just, I love that some kid like went to school went to the army like went, or whatever got recruited in one of the branches and he's like why did you join the guy i saw top gun like, that's why 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent nick you were a story you were kind of texting me a story that like you were kind of one of those people right oh well i mean i grew up with top gun it was my the first like real action movie that i ever saw and uh, it just, it sparked my love of airplanes and aviation. And because of that, I got into flying model planes and then I got into flying real airplanes, going to air shows, falling in love with like the Blue Angels, Thunderbirds, all those guys. And what ended up happening too was I wanted, I wanted to be that, like I wanted to be a fighter pilot and it just, it never worked out just because with where we were as a country, when I came of age, I, I did the whole draft. I did the ASVAB and all that stuff. And it, uh, it came down to my family going, you're going to college first. After you're done yeah. with college, you can do whatever you want, but college first, and then you can do whatever you want. And so, of course, college comes through. That takes six years. And no, it was, <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. Um, it turned out that I looked at it and I thought I was going to be too tall to fly fighters. And I mean, I could still join the Navy or the Air Force and fly like transports or um, something full of rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong, but yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to fly the F-18. I wanted to fly the F-14 and it just, it, it didn't happen. And, uh, turn, turns out I don't have the right stuff. Does someone need to get let out? One second, guys. All right. <laughs> Nick, you know, it's funny because when we when we first started working together, you were wearing aviators just like the ones that I had because I also wear aviators. I know you like aviators, Eric, too. Love them. And like, then and you met him and he was humming like you've lost that no, loving feeling. No, no, no. This is what you used to say. This dude, I'm not even kidding. This is the first time I've ever told you this, Nick. Whenever we would work together, you would always say like, copy that Ghost Rider. And I always thought you were talking about the Nick Cage Ghost Rider movie. <laughs> I never knew what you were talking about. I was always like, oh, he must really like that movie sort of thing. And then it finally hit me when I was watching this. I was like, he was fucking quoting Top Gun every day, like every That's single hilarious. day. But yeah, and then you have a, like a leather jacket too, right? So I have, I had one. It uh, it doesn't fit anymore. Thank you, COVID and nonstop <laughs> eating. But yeah, no, I did. I, I did have a bomber jacket that... It wasn't exactly like the one that Tom Cruise had in Top Gun, but it had all the patches and everything enough to where it like it looked like it was it wasn't real. Like guys wouldn't come up to me and be like, oh, are you in the Air Force? I'd be like, no, <laughs> trust me, yeah. I'm not like. But um, yeah, no, I definitely had the bomber leather jacket. It looks so cool, especially with, yeah. <laughs> especially with the aviators and riding in my truck. I'm just like, yes, I feel so cool. But I probably looked like a complete tool. <laughs> you, can't, you can't wear aviators that's stolen valor it's like not nah, they're aviators dude like so i yeah. i gotta say i have never been so immediately jazzed up from a movie i don't think ever in my life the way when this movie starts like obviously it's that like the sun's rising it's an orange sky you get these cool like silhouettes of the boats and the planes mm -hmm. starting to turn and then you get that engine just like lights up and then you get the down 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 literally was like sweating i was like this is amazing i'm freaking out right now how excited i was right from the start of this movie when, when did you guys get hooked to this like what, right away like yeah. you said right away it's and it's and it's done for that by design because tony scott when he was first starting to get into directing he was doing commercials and music videos and he got recruited to do top gun based on his i think it was a commercial for Saab where he actually took mm -hmm. video footage of a jet taking off along with the Saab car and uh, Paramount was like, yes, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need to do. And just his overall style, his aesthetic, getting the sunrises, like you were saying, it's just a perfect crescendo to get you hooked and they never let you go. Yeah, dude. I, I know he had a lot of trouble with the military. Like they gave him a lot of shit. Oh, um, yeah. Movies back then, like when you were doing like a Michael Bay movie, like with Transformers and stuff, like the military is always on board for his movies because he, he makes the military look so good. Mm -hmm. And like, I think in 86, like military movies weren't like a oh, big budget film behind it. 
there's the scene at the beginning where, you know, it's all the suns are setting and it's like a beautiful, and like, apparently Scott was straight up like, Hey, we need to keep shooting. And they're like, well, we're done. And he's like, <laughs> how much? And literally he's like, take out Paramount's checkbook. And they kept it going. $25,000 to get the shot that he wanted. And <sighs> good for him. He writes the check. They take the shot. <laughs> Two weeks later, the check bounces. <laughs> there you go. Boom. I love it. Dude. Cause like it nowadays would be like Venmo me. It's like, Oh, it's not going through. It's like, well, then we're not turning the boat. Exactly. Venmo uncle Sam. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now it's like, here's a piece of paper. It's like, ah, oh, it's good enough for me. That's so sick though. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I knew this before, but Tony Scott and Ridley Scott are, are brothers. That's so mm-hmm. cool. I did not know that. That's so cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he had a pretty, pretty awful uh, death actually. It was pretty sad, but yeah. Um, but it is, but still great movie. Like he, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I want to see more by Tony Scott. Now I don't really know much else he's done. Did he do enemy of the state or Beverly Hills top two? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very, very good director. And then, I mean, just fantastic. And then man, Tom Cruise, it's like, it it hurts when you see him in the eighties and the nineties, like before he got like crazy, you're like, dude, this guy Mm could have been so sick. Like why is he was though? Tom I know. Cruise was so sick, and then he just went nuts. Like <laughs> I know, dude. Like you got this and risky business and legend. Like, dude, legend came out. Like, I don't know if it was right before this or right after this, but like, dude, he's the mm-hmm. coolest actor in the world. Like, yeah, he's very lucky he got this role too because he was not the first choice. No, a definitely lot not. of people turned it down. Swayze, Emilio Estevez, Nicolas Cage, mm. Broderick, Sean Penn. I'm reading the list now. Eric Stoltz, Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Jeez. Rob Lowe. I mean, it's like all good looking people. None of them half as crazy. Could have been any of them. And not Patrick. Patrick Swayze is not around, but yeah. I don't know. It's hard to imagine anybody else though. I mean, that right. That just kind of like cocky attitude, that smile, just sort of thing. He's got blind confidence. Like you cannot shake his confidence, mm-hmm. which is interesting. He's got like oh, 100%. Manic energy like a clenched fist Mm -hmm. like he's a walking clenched fist he's just one movement from being pushed over the edge it's what (laughs) and and nick you mentioned um maverick got pushed off is it not the july 4th weekend there anymore further they pushed it again they pushed it again to november oh the summer movie what are we doing nick i don't know man it's it's so depressing but at the same time I mean, I kind of get it because Paramount and Tom Cruise want to get the most money that they yeah. can. But at the same time, fuck that. Give me my movie. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> we've waited almost three years for this thing now. It's insane. Jeez. Well, it's like you're going to, I mean, with COVID and everything, you're going to release it like right when flu season's kicking off again. Like, yeah, uh, it doesn't well, make mm-hmm. sense. But I hope they change it back and say, you know what, July 4th weekend again. Or I think it was July 9th. I forgot the last day yeah. i heard july th- uh july 3rd i think it was okay. going to be launched and then oh i hope that's it man it will do so- it will do just fine just fine if it comes out then it would have been perfect yeah. because the movie theaters are opening up it would have been safe and i get it this yeah. is a movie that needs to be seen on the big screen which by the way the original top gun i cannot stress it enough you see it on the big screen it is incredible like literally the cinematography alone has not been matched since yep. 86. And I think the sequel is going to sure be just as good. Be an insane. Speaking that's of sick. the sequel, because yeah, like obviously they have way more, you know, advanced cameras. They can do so much more obviously than they could in 86. This movie in 1986 had a $15 million budget and it made 356 million. That is disgusting. Why do you think it took this long for them to make a sequel? It sounds like there was probably tons of ideas to, to get it done. And Tom, and I'm sure a lot of other people are like, nah, this isn't happening until, until exactly. Top Gun 2 is good. You know, I'm not doing it. I'm not just doing a Top Gun. That makes me happy. Top Gun. Yeah. And plus you also got to think about like Val Kilmer. He hasn't been in the best health in the last yeah. 20 yeah. years. Yeah. And he was a mainstay character. Like it, it easily goes Maverick, Iceman, Goose, unless, unless you're me and you go Goose, Maverick, Iceman. <laughs> like, I just watched the trailer before we we started recording this podcast. Oh, it looks great, yeah. and they got um. Apparently, it's like the same thing. Like Goose's son is in the academy, yeah, or, or in Top Gun, and mm-hmm. Maverick is a teacher, and mm-hmm. it's like that. I have a feeling Rooster is going to die, and it's going to be the same thing again, where Maverick is like double Ooh. kill. You know, I honestly I think it's going to go the opposite way, and the spoiler warning for anybody out there, in <laughs> case I'm right, I think Maverick's going to die. 
No, I think no, dude, no way. I th- no, I, I think so. I think this is just my this is my prediction. I think Tom Cruise is gonna or Tom Cruise. I think Maverick is gonna <laughs> sacrifice himself for Rooster to make sure Rooster is safe, and then like the that's gonna happen. Of a torch. I don't. For I don't. Sure. Want, I mean, dude, do we want a passing of the torch? I know. I I kind of hope you're right, Eric. Because it's kind of like Indiana Jones, where like Shia LaBeouf goes to pick up the hat, and Harrison Ford's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Like that's kind of how I hope it goes. <laughs> well, well, the movie movie's called Maverick, mm-hmm. so it's gonna be about him. And I think I think it's gonna focus on him the whole time. I I just I don't know. I hope he yeah. doesn't. I hope he survives at the end and is still kicking ass. I hope Viper mm-hmm. shows up at some point. Oh my god! Yes, I'd like an eighty-seven year old Viper to show up and fly one more time. Dude, there's something about like old military guys like suiting up one more time and getting out there. I just like something about that is always like, ooh, I'm so excited. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he's my favorite. He was my favorite for sure. Cause like you could tell he's the guy that like it's just about integrity to him. Like he's he knows what he's doing. He's really, really smart, but he sees the potential in Maverick and, and he never gets mad. Like he always kind of keeps it together. Yeah. He's he's yeah. my favorite for yeah. sure. What would your call um, sign be, Alec? Or, or Nick? What would your call sign be? Oh my god. You ever think about a call sign? <laughs> probably either dopey or fuck up no, I'm, I'm kidding but um well because so oh here's God. the thing an actual call sign is based on something that you do that's like a nickname kind of like you're almost like being razzed but at the same time with top gun they made it super badass so if i had to make my call sign super badass i think it would have to be something like like rad like radical or something Something just like so like '90s that it just can't be stopped. Like, yeah, definitely would be radical. Nice. <laughs> How about you? I, I'm close to dopey. I had Dewey as mine. Nice. I drink Mountain. I used to drink a ton of Mountain Dew, so that'd be mine. See, that's perfect. See, that's exactly what it is. It's like it's based on a characteristic that you do. So, <laughs> dopey. I'm goofy as shit. Oh man. Or like it could be. I also thought like it'd be funny if my name was Garrus. Is it Garrus? Why do they call him that? It's like it's his favorite Pokemon. <laughs> To go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Snorlax. <laughs> to go. I'd like to be multiple storm. That's my uh, Xbox gamer tag I've had since I was twelve, and there I'd be go. like, "Yeah, I survived a hurricane and a tornado." Oh, maybe, maybe banger. Bangering was my AIM username back in the day. There you go, bangering. Well, quick little story actually about Tom Cruise. Apparently, you probably already know this, Nick. But when Tom Cruise wanted, they asked him to do this movie. He didn't want to do yeah. it, and they they brought him up and flew yeah. him around. And a mm-hmm. guy named Bo- Bozo, I guess, <laughs> flew him. And and Tom Cruise like slammed his head or whatever. And he was like, "What the fuck are you doing, man? You just hit me in the head." He's like, "Well, they don't call me Bozo for nothing." <laughs> <laughs> yep. But then he like ran to the phone after the the flight with Bozo and called Jerry Bruckheimer. I was like, "I'm in, I'm in, let's do this." Or like some called one of the producers. That's, That's it's just like this. This it feels mm-hmm. right. Probably it's just like the Bozo thing did it. Like knocked some sense into me. Uh, yeah. I like that the goose's son. They call him Rooster. It's a goose rooster. It's kind of like birds. Interested in to see why they call him Rooster. Do you know that what a maverick is? It's like a loner, is it, or what is it? Yeah, an unbranded range animal, especially a motherless calf or an independent individual who does not go along with a group or a party, a.k.a. someone you don't want in the military. You want them to follow <laughs> orders. You don't want them to be a loner, like, you know, on their own. Right. So. Exactly. And with that definition, now it makes sense that Kelly McGillis was like, what, your mother lo- not like you or something? Like, yeah, because he's yep. a motherless calf. <laughs> yep. Meg Ryan, by the way, shout out Meg Ryan. Pride of uh, Fairfield, Connecticut, right there. Oh my god! Isn't it her birthday today or something? Oh, dude, come on, man! Why you gotta one up me on the fact? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm shooting the shit. I, I'm thing. not sure. I think it might or might not be her birthday today. I'm not sure. I don't have That's Google. Insane. In front of me. That's insane. That's insane. I'm gonna find that out that. right That's now. Insane. Google it right now. Oh my god! Yeah, she stepped. She stepped away no, from no, November nineteenth. <laughs> oh damn it! I was so close. When Top Gun Two comes out. There, oh my god! And, and I get back back to Top Gun Maverick. It's a it's a summer movie, beach volleyball, summer, summer, summer. I don't want to be eating turkey and going to see Top Gun and being like, I feel fat and watching <laughs> beach volleyball. I want to freaking I I got the need for speed, man. I need to be in the summer. Well, Meg Ryan, sure. I love how the movie's about wingmen, and then Meg Ryan is like the worst wingman ever. She's just talking about all the people that Tom Cruise is hooked up with, like in front of Kelly McGillis. It's just like, oh, you know, remember that girl? It's just like you're you're fucking this up for me. Stop. Yeah, she really kind of did. She really oh. kind of, but no, she she uh, she ended. Yeah, she exactly. She recovered very well. She got out of that spin. It was really good. Yeah, got a tailspin. 
buying. Oh my god, Top Gun. It's all it's all coming together. <laughs> now, oh, that's Nick, awesome. do you have like a favorite part? <laughs> um, honestly, the entire opening scene and the first dogfight are definitely my. It has to be my favorite part, just because you get introduced to all the characters, you get to see the inverted four G negative dive that they go into the photo. You really get to encapsulate what the characters are about right there, and you get to see like Maverick. He flips off the guys from Russia, and like <laughs> Goose takes the photo, and he's just super funny the entire time. And then you get the drama with Cougar coming in and nearly killing himself on the landing, mm. which fun fact, he was supposed to die, but the Navy told them, no, we can't have anybody die in this movie because of a landing accident. So, and that was, that was before goose too. So yeah, that would kind of take away from, yeah. from the, the impact the, of goose. Dying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. I agree. Mm. It was interesting though. And we see, we see him land too. Like he, he mm-hmm. hit, no, he doesn't land, but he, he gets the shoot out properly and he gets out. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Because him almost crashing basically gives these guys the opportunity, and I love how everybody at Top Gun knows that that's how they got there too. They're like, oh, exactly. Yeah. Like Slider was giving Goose and uh, Maverick shit about it, and was just kind of like, oh, so you slide into Cougar spot? No, we earned it. We earned it. Make sure, yeah. Alec. Yeah. Do you have the favorite part? I mean, kind of what I already told you guys, like that opening with just the second Danger Zone starts and that engine. Like I not the fourth one, the second time it. it the fourth, the second. I love I love that song so much because of this movie. I also think that like uh, Take My Breath Away is just as prevalent in this as as Danger Zone. Yeah, Favorite makeout song. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, I think I just think that the first time that Jet powers up, like I just just immediate like just excitement. So I love that. What about you, Eric? I like the inverted line in general. Like, it's like, why? It's like, because I was inverted. I used to, we used to say that in college all the time. Like me and Knuckles, Alec, you remember? And uh, like, we'd be just like so hungover the next day from just, you know, whatnot. And uh, it's like, dude, I got so inverted last night. It's like, we were way too inverted. Like way too inverted. (laughs) Oh my God. It's just good times, you know? Well, I got to ask you this, Nick. Like, or I guess both of you guys. I'm sorry, but like World War Three. Wouldn't that happen after the end of this movie? It technically, it really should have. It, it really, like that was a huge dogfight between Russia and America. Like, they never, they never say, and it's not Russia. It was originally supposed to be yeah, North Korea. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they these are Russian, it's not. They, they never. They're MIGs. Yeah, um, which is usually like a, a Russian you know, airplane. Like it's built by um, yeah, like but, a Russian manufacturer, but Soviet exactly. Soviet. But um, yeah, it was, it was supposed to be North Korea, but they never, they kept it very vague for that purpose. That way no one was singled mm-hmm. out. That way if someone does get pissed, they could be like, well, it wasn't you, it was actually Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so, really? I could have sworn it was us. <laughs> no, no, watch it again. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but like, I'm imagining, I'm like, this is not going to end well. This is going to be like international news. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to address that in the second one, though. I would, I would think so. I think they're going to make the second one a little bit smarter than the first one still going to be action packed but hopefully they can tie up loose ends like that for sure yeah well you guys remember that first scene when you've got strickland from back to the future <laughs> and uh yeah and Go- yeah, goose and him are sitting there and they're talking to each other and it's like yeah you hooked up with like penny blah 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 or whatever apparently she's coming into this one yep penny benjamin is coming back and gonna make a full movie appearance and i forget the actress's name but she's absolutely it's gorgeous jennifer conley there you go mm-hmm. yeah and no Meg Ryan though, no Meg Ryan. She's done with acting since like 2002 well, or three. That's the thing. But... I feel bad. Like Kelly McGillis. Like why aren't they bringing her back? No comment. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> honestly, I think it. Well, I mean, honestly, Tom Cruise was the only one to really like. I think he was the one that pushed it. I'm not sure, but Kelly McGillis, I think, is would be fantastic, and I think she would still still should be in the movie I for know, sure. It's kind of fucked up. One hundred percent. It's just it's a bad look for sure. It's a bad look. And speaking of like mm-hmm. like age and Tom Cruise, I went down a rabbit hole on like how does Tom Cruise stay young? And yeah. I found an article, dude. Guys, stem cells. Yeah, it's a hundred percent stem cells. But I found one, it's a hundred percent just every day like stem cells and shit. But there's one article I found where he like makes like a mask or like a facial of um bird shit and rice. <laughs> No way! Come no, he on. literally does, dude. He You're literally. Fucking with me. No, I up, swear dude. it's a it's pear, like some kind of bird shit and like some rice, and he's like what? he swears by it. And I'm like, okay. dude, it's stem cells. Don't 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 like tell me I got to put bird shit on my face and like, but that's yeah, that's what laughing. Like I forgot what kind of bird. Google it. Google it. Google it. Those Man. listening, Google it. Maybelline Sorry. is really going out there, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe it's birch and rice. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I just feel bad because I'm like, now they're just like, yeah, we want a younger woman, though. But Tom Cruise is fine. It's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. And also, she is so much taller than Tom Cruise. Dude. Yeah, like a five inch. <laughs> yeah. Dude had to stand on a soapbox and she had to, like, not wear heels in order to actually make it look like he was taller. It's crazy. Dude, I read that she didn't wear shoes in any of the scenes that they were in. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can tell, to Tom, like when he's next to Goose and, and getting yelled at by Strickland. Totally, they like slackers, goose. You're a slacker, Maverick. Like I was expecting that. <laughs> totally on a box there. I, I just looked it up. Kelly, she's still acting, so it's like uh, it's kind of you know. Hey, hopefully, maybe no. she makes a, a surprise appearance. We don't know. Hopefully, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be cool because I like her character. It's like she's very knowledgeable about what's going on, but the, it's it's such a cool plot because it's like they don't like Maverick because he's doing he's breaking all their protocol, but he's still succeeding. So it's like we have to learn from him. Maverick, you can't you can't lasso that wild horse. You can't just lasso him down. Oh. Maverick's Maverick. He's he doesn't he doesn't get tied down to a woman. You know he's out there. <laughs> he's on the edge on his motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta say that. Gotta give it to Tom Cruise. I mean, as weird as his personal life is, the dude is dedicated to his craft. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the the Fallout Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah, I saw that out in 2018 in theaters. Dude, that's like probably my one of my favorite action mm-hmm. movies. Yeah. We were talking about it last time, Nick, because we've been doing a lot of Keanu Reeves movies, too. It's like oh, nice. Keanu and, and Tom Cruise are kind of similar because they both do their own action. Yep. They, they kind of are selective to a degree about their projects. But Keanu Reeves is like the man in person. I mean, not that I know him, but uh, it's just I don't know. You just wish Tom could be a little more like Keanu sometimes. Right. Just a little bit more accessible, a little bit more chill. <laughs> yeah, but. I don't think he's that bad, Tom. He's just so on edge, dude. He's so like he's like a clench fist. I know. Exactly. I just you know he's so on. What edge. What was that COVID outbreak thing? Was that from Top Gun? No, that was from Mission Impossible. That freak out that he had uh, with people not following protocols. I oh, I didn't think that no. was that bad. I no, it was, was great. I think he could have done it a little bit differently, but I think yeah. it was needed. I think someone needed to speak up like that. And plus, he's putting his own money on the line. Same with Paramount to get it done. Yep. He's probably pissed that, you know, this is happening and people on set are like, and it's like, you know how serious we have to take this? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I get his frustration, but he could have handled it with a little more grace for sure. For sure. Well, because like, he's not just the actor. He's also, yeah, the executive producer. So it is kind of like, hey, you were on set. Like, why is this happening? Sort of thing. Screwing around without their mask, talking with someone like less than three feet away from yeah. you. He screamed out. He freaked out. No one else is going to say anything except yeah. them. Well, I feel like we only scratched like the surface of this movie. Is there uh is there anything else, Nick, that you've Well, let's see. Some of the some fun facts. The movie is dedicated to Art Scholl, who mm-hmm. was a mm-hmm. professional pilot who unfortunately died trying to film flat spin footage for Goose's death. Yeah. And he was a, a fantastic pilot that did aerial demonstrations all throughout the fifties, sixties, and seventies. He was actually a champion. And the movie is dedicated in his memory because he unfortunately lost his life producing the movie. Oh, the um, <laughs> the flyby that they did of the uh, of the tower at Miramar, that was one of the first times that that had ever been done. And people kept coming out of their houses around the area in San Diego thinking like, oh, God, did someone like lose their mind and go on their last flight and decide to have fun? But yeah, no, that was super cool. And then what's one last thing? Oh, so my personal opinion, you can take it or leave it. But I think Mighty Wings is better than Danger Zone. Which song is that? That's the one you sent us on YouTube. Yeah, so that is, that's a mashup. So when you think about it, Mighty Wings sounds exactly like Ken's theme from Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Wait, I gotta listen to I gotta it again. To I gotta Which, to it again. I gotta remember what song, was it in the movie? Nick sent us a, a was a mashup of like some, some like other people doing it, right? I think it was recorded by Cheap Trick, and it was used in the movie for the first dogfight that they had between Maverick and Jester, but they didn't use any lyrics. They just used the, the music, oh, the melody okay. and everything. In my opinion, it's a much better song because it's, it's not as overdone as Danger Zone. Danger Zone is really, yeah. really simple. Yeah. I want to just hit two quick points. Yeah. One, Goose's death, getting over it really quickly. I know... Maverick had to do it, but geez, he threw his dog tags in the water. <laughs> just like, nope, nobody's going to want these. No, it's kind of like, yeah, your son's not going to want these someday. No, just throw <laughs> yeah, them in right? the ocean. <laughs> your wife. That, but that was the attitude. It's like, hey, like, he's dead. I'm here. Like, sucks to suck goose kind of attitude, which is kind of like the Eastbound and Down scene where 
Kenny Power shows up at his friend's funeral yeah. and they nicknamed each other Maverick and Goose. And they always would fight like, I'm Maverick, you're Goose. And he's like, no, I'm Goose, you're I'm like Matt. And they would fight back yep. and forth. And at, at his funeral, he's like, you know what? I'm Maverick and he's Goose because he's dead. And it's like, it's kind of <laughs> like, it sucks to suck. And that's kind of like what happens. It's like, I got to forget about Goose. I got to let him go completely. Yeah. Um, and he does. He takes his picture off the mirror. He like throws. So he's really, truly trying to delete him. Almost. Last thing I wanted to say is, like we said, Tom Cruise wasn't the original one they wanted for the role. So was Kenny Loggins. They originally wanted Toto or Ario Speedway. Yep. yep. To do mm-hmm. um, Danger Zone. Mm-hmm. A Toto version of Danger Zone. I'd like to hear though. I would too. I wonder if they would go a little bit more like like synth and like quiet, like they kind of did with Africa, or if it would be just as like upbeat, like what Kenny Loggins did. I I, I seriously can't think of anybody that had a better career for movies in the eighties than Kenny Loggins. No yeah. one, like like literally <laughs> Footloose, Caddyshack, this um, Beverly Hills Cop. He did a couple songs for that. Yeah, yep. dude, he was on fire in the eighties. <laughs> I went to the danger zone. Not it. I think it's like all like Toto like, rains in Africa. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's kind of like uh, Breakfast Club. They had Billy Idol do the "Don't You Forget About Me" song. I love that version. Right. I've heard it before. It's really good, actually. Yeah, it's hard for me to. It's so hard to like disassociate them, but yeah, it is good. This might break the record of our longest podcast, but so well deserved because. It's so much to talk about. And Nick, it's like a true expert is talking to us. So thank you so much. I feel like I learned something today. Yeah, I, I learned a lot. And that it's not Meg Ryan's birthday is one of the things I learned. No, it's definitely not Meg <laughs> Ryan's birthday. Uh, oh, man. Well, um, Nick, thanks again, man. Um, any movie that you ever want to see on the wheel, jump on, just let us know. Absolutely. Honestly, I would love to see more aviation movies done just because yeah. those are my personal favorites. Like, Fly to the Intruder. If you want to do a dramatic movie, Radio Flyer. Uh, literally, uh, that's a really sad but a really good movie. And then Fly to the Navigator, if you guys were going to do a Disney, like live action Disney oh, movie. Yeah. That's on Disney Plus. Yeah. And then they got, uh, what is that, Flight of the Phoenix too with uh, that remake. Hook yes. Remake. Oh, and The Final Countdown, which is a really good movie oh, Con too. Air. Yeah, there's a lot. Ace Combat, the video game, into a movie. Just do more more flying movies. Would love it. Ah, shit. We should yes. do another episode on this because I feel like there's so much more to talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm down. Um, Let's go. All right. Maybe maybe we'll do a part two. <laughs> but um, anyways, Eric, we got to spin that freaking wheel. Holy shit. Started oh, up shit, on shit. the sixth one. <laughs> Damn. And I moved in above him. Well, if you were directly above him, how could you see him? Because I was inverted. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road. Perfect. Nice. Tom Hardy. Yeah. And that's our last movie, too. Oh, yeah. Like I forgot to mention <laughs> that. But no, I really I really did land on oh, it. Good. I don't know if you can you can see it. Uh perfect. It <laughs> well, Nick, thanks again. And we will see everybody for the final episode of the Spring into Action movies next week with Mad Max Fury Road. Guys, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.